Hi, and welcome back to Machine Learning Foundations. This is episode six, where we'll take what you've learned about convolutional neural networks in the previous few episodes and apply them to a computer vision scenario that was a Kaggle challenge not that long ago. But before we get there, let's take a look at the answer to the exercise from the last video. So this was a very simple exercise. Let's take a look. First of all, we'll import everything that we need to import and we'll download the data set, which is just some simple happy or sad faces. You'll then extract the data set and you'll put it into um, a folder called TMP slash HRS. And if we take a look at our files, we could see in there TMP HRS has been downloaded and we have happy images in there and we have sad images in there. As we can see. I've also set up a callback. So once it hits 99.9% .9 accuracy, it will cancel training. It's a very small data set and maybe overfitting hugely for the data set, but that's okay. We'll just want to use this to test out some convolutions. So here we can define our network and we define it three convolutional 2D layers, three max pooling 2D layers that will then flatten and feed into a dense. We can use the RMS prop optimizer, set the learning rate to be one times 10 to the minus three. You could even tweak this as much as you think uh, will work best. So now we just use our image data generator and we'll set up a train data gen, which will rescale the images and then we'll flow from directory and it will flow from the directory that we've just seen. It will resize to 150 by 150 and it will flow them in batches of 10. Uh, there are 80 images in the data set. So when we then do the model.fit, we should set steps per epoch to be eight because eight times 10 is 80 and that makes it run nice and fast. So we can do a model.fit now <clears throat> and we can see it's running really, really quickly. It's, you know, 0.2 of a second per step and we hit 100% accuracy very quickly. It's a super simple data set, but hopefully the scaffolding that you're building out here is something that you can learn from when you're building for more complex models. Now that wasn't so bad, right? It was a super simple exercise, but it will lay the foundations for what you're going to study in this video. So let's get started. The Dogs vs. Cats dataset has 25,000 images of cats and dogs in various poses. It was used for a Kaggle challenge a few years ago in determining state-of-the-art computer vision techniques. In the next few minutes, you'll see how to use what you've learned so far to build a classifier for cats and dogs that's over 96% accurate on the training set. As before, you're going to split the data into training and validation directories, and each of these will have cats and dogs subdirectories. You'll then be able to train a classifier on cats and dogs images using a generator that pulls from the training subdirectories and which validates by using a generator that pulls from the validation subdirectories. So to get started, let's first import an image data generator, which allows us to use them. For our training data, we'll then simply create an image data generator and flow from the training directory. Note that the image data generator will handle normalizing the images by dividing their byte values by 255 to turn a value from 0 to 255 into a value from 0 to 1. To get the training images from the training subdirectories, we can call flow from directory passing it a bunch of parameters. The first of which, of course, is the training directory itself. This should only contain subdirectories for which will provide the labels for the classes. We have cats and dogs subdirectories, so we'll have cats and dogs labels. Next is our target size. And as the images come in many sizes, we'll need to have a consistent shape to feed into the neural network. I've set them to be 150 by 150 here, but you can choose whatever you want, of course. All images, regardless of their shape, will end up as 150 by 150, so choose carefully. And remember when creating your model to have the input layers use the same dimensions. Next, choose a batch size for which the images will be loaded. Pick something that divides evenly into a step size that you'll use later. So for example, if I have 22,500 training images, and that's taking 90% of the data for training, and then a batch size of 250, then I will need 90 steps to load this into the neural network. Finally, there's the class mode, and as the two classes, we'll set it to binary. For validation, you'll do exactly the same, except of course that you want to flow from the validation directory and not the training one. And here's where you define your model. This should look familiar by now. It is a convolutional neural network. I've designed this one with three convolutional layers, each paired with a max pool layer. 
The first convolutional layer will learn 16 filters, the next 32, and the next 64. It's important to remember the input shape. Remember earlier we resized everything to be 150 by 150, and that's what we use here. The 3 is for the color channels. If you use a different size, make sure to adjust this to match. And similar for your output layer. This should match to the number of classes in your model. One exception which we're following here is that a binary classifier can get by with just one neuron, provided you use a sigmoid activation function, which sets it to zero for one class and one for the other. If we take a look at our model's summary, it looks like this. You can see the familiar resizing of the image as it travels through the network by convolutions and pooling. By the end, you can see that we have 9.5 million trainable parameters, so this can take a while. I've chosen to use RMS Prop as the optimizer here. It's set with a high learning rate, and you can tweak this to try for better performance on your network. Finally, we'll train the network by specifying the training and validation generators as our data sources. Don't forget to set the steps per epoch and validation steps for performance. And these should be calculated by dividing the amount of data by the batch size. And this gives us 90 and 10, respectively, in this case. Now that gives you everything you need to train a cats versus dogs classifier. Let's take a look at it in action, after which I'll give you the URL with all the code so you can try it for yourself. Let's take a look at a much larger data set, and this is cats and dogs. The cats and dogs data set has about 25,000 images in it, and those images are various different cats and dogs in various poses. They're real photographs. And this data set was used for a Kaggle challenge a couple of years ago. We're going to do our imports first, and as well as TensorFlow, we're going to import like a bunch of stuff that we can use for manipulating the file system. Because this data set is just a raw zip containing cats and dogs, we're going to have to do a bit of data pre-processing on it so that we can use it with image data generators. So we can see here it's about 800 meg to download, and now I'm unzipping that to create the slash TMP folder containing the cats and dogs. And if we go to the file system and we take a look at slash TMP, we'll see in here is pet images, and within pet images are cat and dog. I'm not going to open them to look at the files right now, because it takes a little while for them to all list out, and it will look like Colab is frozen. But what I can do is just list the directory, list how many images are in it, and we can see there's 12,501 in each, which is our 25,000. And now I'm going to create my own directory, so cats versus dogs master, and these will contain training and testing, and each of those will have cats and dogs images within them, or cats and dogs folders within them that will contain the images. I've created this function called split data, and as its name suggests, what it does is it will split the data into training and testing for us. So if you specify a split size of 0.9, what it's going to do is going to get 90% of the images at random, that will be for training and 10%, which will be for testing. And then it will split these into cats and dogs for us. It'll also filter out any of the images that are corrupt. And as we can see here, two of them are zero length, so we'll ignore them. Just to make sure I got them right and to, that my sums were correct, we can see that 90% of the images, 11,000, of each are in the training and 1,250 of each are in the testing. I can then create my model, and it's just going to be a simple convolutional neural network with three layers of conf2d combined with three layers of max pooling that get flattened and fed into dense. I'm going to compile this with an RMS prop with a learning rate of 1e to the minus 3. You can tweak this maybe to make it more accurate. I've set it to be a binary cross entropy because there are only two classes. Next, we're going to create our generators, and our generators are going to rescale the images by dividing by 255. There are better ways to rescale, but this one will work for now. And then we're going to flow from the training directory to the training generator, and we're going to flow from the validation directory to the validation generator. Note that I'm setting batch sizes here so that when we're training later on, we'll load them in batches so we can be a bit faster. So next up, let me run that cell. So next up, we're just going to do the model.fit, passing it the train generator and the validation generator. And we're setting steps per epoch and validation steps to match the um, number of batches that we have to match the number of images. So this should run quite fast. So in the case of training, it's going to take 90 steps of 250 images each, and it's going to take 10 steps of 250 images each in order to do a validation. This gives us a much faster training. If you were not to do this, it would be loading the images one by one into the GPU, and there'd be a lot of wasted time. But as we can see, it's still a big and complex data set, so it's taking maybe 45 seconds per epoch. So I'm just going to speed it up until we get to the end. 
Before we do that, actually, just note that you'll see warnings like this, possibly corrupt EXIF data. Don't worry about those. That the EXIF data is additional metadata that goes onto the image with things like the location of the image. So when the TIFF plugin is actually decoding those images, it's trying to read that it sees it as corrupt and it's giving us that warning. It's not going to impact your training in any way. And now we see it's almost done. We're about three seconds to go on the final epoch. We've only trained for 15 epochs and you see it's just a little over a minute per epoch like this. Let's take a look at what our final figures are. We can see it was 97% on the training set and 82% on the validation set. So not bad, it is overfitting a bit. We can work on that, but right now it looks pretty good on the validation set, even 82%. We can actually take a plot and see what our history looks like. We can see like our validation accuracy uh, against our training accuracy, and we can even see our loss of validation against training. So this indication of the validation curve going up like this is clear indication of overfitting, so we could do a bit of tweaking there. And we'll learn about that with image augmentation later. And if we want to try to test a few images, we can do so. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to choose some files. I'm going to go to my downloads where I've downloaded a few files already. You can guess from their names what their contents are. And let's see how the classifier does with them. So we can see it thought puppy was a dog. It thought pug was a dog. It thought dog was a dog. It thought this cat was a dog. And it got both of these cats right. And if we take a look at cat 253662, this was the one that it got wrong and I thought was a dog. So it's an interesting picture and maybe we can learn from this and how to optimize it better for the future. Now that you've seen it in action, here's the URL for the lab so you can try it out for yourself. As you saw in the screencast, there is room for improvement because of overfitting. And in the next video, you'll learn some techniques for that. But have fun with the lab in the meantime, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>